Hi sir, welcome to the Anil Agarwal Dialogue 2024. Uh, uh, we, it is a pleasure for us to have you here. I want to start with asking you, what is the status of the big cat conservation in India? Given the challenges that India faces as a country, having the largest human population of 1.4 billion, amongst the densest pop human populations, I think India has done remarkably well when it comes to conservation as a whole. And particularly with large cats, we've been blessed with an extremely high diversity of large cats. No other country has no leopards, common leopards, mm -hmm. lions, tigers, leopards, and now a few cheetahs from Africa. And not to forget the clouded leopard and more than a dozen other smaller cats. So I think given the challenges, we've done very well. We have several lessons to offer globally. But at the same time, I think it's important to reflect and introspect on what we've done right and what we've not done right, especially when it comes to habitat connectivity, local communities, the impact that the conservation efforts have had on local communities. And unless we do that, um, I don't think our models of conservation are sustainable long term. It has been a year of the Cheetah introduction project. What do you think is the, what are the challenges that lie ahead? The introduction of African cheetahs in India has um, come as a big surprise to several of us, um, given that the Supreme Court in 2013 ruled against it and the government appealed and got a, a waiver of sorts. And through the pandemic, this somehow gathered momentum. We've had 20 cheetahs come from Namibia and South Africa. And uh, unfortunately, out of these 20, seven adult animals have died. We've had three litters, of which three cubs have also died. But those are all acceptable at one level. They're, no animal is immortal. The bigger challenge is the very weak scientific foundations of this project. The fact that all the adult cheetahs have ended up spending more time in captivity rather than roaming free. So I don't even know whether this can be called a conservation project anymore. It looks more like a glorified safari. And if you were to go by the official Namibian policy, any large cat which has spent more than three months in captivity cannot be released after that. And after all, quite a few of these cheetahs have come from Namibia, I suppose there is some logic in their thinking. So I don't, uh, unfortunately, have a very positive outlook from a conservation perspective. Can the birth of cubs, of big cats, uh, be, uh, indicate success or be considered, the su uh, considered success for a, a rewilding project? See, in terms of the cheetahs, the situation is very different from the other cats because the other cats occur in wild in India in large numbers through large, uh, fairly significant parts of the country. And often breeding and successful raising of cubs is used as an indicator that things are okay with the population because animals will not invest in breeding and raising cubs unless they feel secure. The situation with cheetahs is again very different because all the births have taken place in captivity. Uh, so in some sense it is forced, males and females are put together in the same space and then they end up mating and then the cubs are born. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't use the birth of cubs as, as either the success or the failure, it, it just happens, it's biology at play. What do you think will be the implications of the cheetah introduction project uh, on uh, the natural environment as a whole? other species and specifically for the gear lions. See, one of the bigger goals or ambition of the cheetah introduction is that the cheetahs would help us bring attention on neglected habitats, what are called as open natural ecosystems, the dry, up, dry kinds of forests, grasslands and so on. And the idea is that the cheetah is a very charismatic species and with that attention, not only will the habitat, but other species like wolves, great Indian bustards, would gain attention. Hmm. But 18 months down the line, the cheetahs are largely in captivity, and we really don't have habitat for cheetahs in India. So I don't see the cheetahs doing very much positive for other forms of wildlife or habitats in India. Unfortunately, there are real negative 
impacts. One is the diversion of attention, second is the diversion of financial resources, third is the continued delay in implementing the 2013 order of the Supreme Court ordering the translocation of lions to uh, Kuno. A real danger is that the Great Indian Bustard is no longer uh, capturing our imagination and attention. It's very, very few birds. The Supreme Court order of 22 to uh, Bari power lines has not been implemented. So there's a lot that is being neglected with this uh, overwhelming attention to the cheetahs. When you say that India does not have uh, habitats that are suitable for cheetahs, uh, could you elaborate for the um, benefit of our readers, for our audience, uh, can you tell us what is an ideal environment? It is not so much the habitat type or habitat structure that is the problem, it is the amount of space. Cheetahs are low density, wide ranging species. On an average, they exist between one to two cats per hundred square kilometers. An adult female in the best of habitats requires about 750 square kilometers of home range. Mm. Unfortunately, India doesn't have it. The entire Kuno National Park is 748 square kilometers. So to have a breeding population, you're looking at a minimum of 50 adults. And to then cover grasslands, open natural ecosystems, you, you really need four, 5,000 square kilometers of uh, contiguous habitat, at least in one place, and then smaller bits all across the country. And that we don't have. So we should have first ensured habitat was available before we bought the cats. The status of leopards in India report was released today. Uh, if you had the chance to go through the findings, what do you think of it? I've taken a very quick look. Uh, overall, total numbers seem to have gone up. There are one or two place, uh, landscapes where the leopard numbers seem to have gone down. But uh, consistently, several of us have been talking about the lack of transparency in these efforts. Uh, we don't know the exact methods, what the data and how the data is collected and what analysis they are put through. So I don't wish to comment too much given the black box approach to this whole thing. Okay. Thank you so much for talking to us. Most welcome. Thank you for having me.